Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to be looking at the Smart Reverb by Sonable. Let's go ahead and get started by just demoing some drums. So this is completely dry. Let's go ahead and turn the reverb on. We have a learning algorithm. We can go ahead and choose drums, and then we can hit record. It's going to learn and come up with a reverb to propose to us. So this is what it thinks that would sound good. And it does not change the decay time. So let's go ahead and set that to something that's a little more suitable. And we can see here, this is the decay profile. And we can see sort of this really cool particle visualization on what's going on. And it scales with time. So for example, if we bump it up, this is going to get more dense. As we bump it down, it's going to change. So wow, I nailed right back where we were. And we've got these three envelopes that we can change that will change the properties of the reverb. But before we dive into those things, let's go ahead and talk about some of the more general things we can do. So we can morph between these different characters according to the profile that it's set up. So after it's done learning, it's going to set up a profile that we can sort of move around and test out. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's just start in the middle here. And let's bring the dry sound down to zero. So it's just verb. This is what rich sounds like. Natural. Intimate. Now I, I found that I tend to like natural and intimate more. Artificial. And then back to the middle. There's a width control to control how wide the signal is. The middle will be mono or zero. And then we can go very wide. You can run into some serious phase problems though if you leave it at 100. 50 is a good idea and you can double click to reset a value. We've got color, we can get a darker color. Or a brighter color. I kind of liked intimate so I'm going to sort of morph that way. And then you've got clarity. So this is 0% clarity. Or just 0 clarity, I'm not sure it's a percentage. Dial it up. It's 100. Very, very cool stuff here. We've got a pre-delay down here, and the pre-delay doesn't like to be moved while playback is happening. So if you click and drag, I can never figure out exactly where to click right here, but if you click the pre-delay itself, you can move it down here. Go ahead and set a pre-delay. And the dry in, so you can hear it working. So you get that lovely little uh, sound little clicking sound. But uh, something to note is it, it does not at all do that with the actual reverb time. It's very smooth. So that was something that is it can be very useful if you're going to automate this. So moving over, we've got these three envelopes here, a spread, a density, and a decay. So this is the decay envelope over time. So for example, we could have it decay very quickly and we can even see it represented here in the particles as we move this around, we can see the decay go down. And so we've we've changed it so that these this area of the region is going to be softer and then it's going to come up sort of unnaturally. So this is something that you normally aren't given controls like this in a reverb. So you can get some really sort of cool profiles this way. You get more of a, you can hear like a filter kind of going on and off. Or we could dial it in like this. You could have some sort of a, of a gate. So this is not not common in reverbs. This is really, really cool and unique. It's uh, I love the fact that it's actually a reverb with a really unique spin on how reverb's been done. It's, this is so cool. So uh, besides the decay envelope down here, you can actually change the different bands. So it's like this is a frequency band. So we can go ahead and alter this uh, so that maybe for some reason the low frequencies ring out for a lot longer, but the mid ones don't. Uh, we could have some sort of really strange envelope where the highs and the lows. And we don't really have that much in the lows, so maybe we do something weird here. It's so responsive and easy to work with. So we can set up these really crazy looking things that can just sound just super cool. But I want to point out that if you move the mixer thing over here, it's going to switch back to the profile. See how this is turned now? It's not dark green anymore. That means we've like changed things. If we move this, it's going to go back to that profile. So just be aware of that. If you set up something very specific, 
it's going to change back. But this gives you a lot of just creative potential. You've also got spread. This is the stereo spread. You can set where the spread is set to happen. Uh, you can run in again to phasing issues if you get kind of crazy, if we have the spread up. And this is over time. So it's going to open the spread up. And so this is going to be really out of phase between the two speakers. It's going to be super wide sounding. And then we could set a range of frequencies that this would be affecting. You see down here we're not being affected. And now it is. So generally you probably are not going to want this incredibly high, but it's definitely worth experimenting. And then finally you've got density. And density I think is easier heard than talked about. I think all of these are kind of that way. So let's go ahead and grab this and hear that. Let's bring the reverb up a bit so we can hear the density. Let's bring it down. The so density can be really useful for getting those early clarity in. So it's pretty interesting. So this gives you a more like sort of washed out of a sound. If you bring this down, you can get a, a closer feeling sound. Uh, and a lot of reverbs, you sometimes see some sort of a parameter that denotes distance of some sort. Uh, different reverbs call it different things. I think this is this is kind of an equivalent here. It accomplishes very much the same thing. So you've got here these three envelopes and this adds just a ton of power to what you're doing. And then we have a couple extra goodies here. So we have the ability to freeze the reverb and, and just hear the tail. So we can go ahead and hear that. We also have the ability to set the decay time to infinite, which has interesting properties in the algorithm itself. So let's go ahead and do that. You can already hear it doing something if we play now. Nice shimmering textures and all those sorts of things. I was looking originally for gain knob and they sort of did one better. They've got an EQ and in the EQ, you've got two filters you can pick and you, you push this little up down arrow down here to get to it. So we could set like a unusual peaking filter somewhere. We can control the gain here. And then you've also got a second filter. Now this is just a, a high pass filter. So we could choose like a shelving filter and we get a gain control. And this is going to, I'll show you in a second. There's some cool, really cool things you can do with this. But this is really nifty. If you want to change the gain, I recommend just setting this back to zero. And then, you know, just taking a high shelf or a low shelf filter and just pumping it up and down. And you can get an equivalent gain control. So you get an EQ as well, which is, which is really nice. And it's very, very, it's kind of tucked away. It's just a beautiful thing here. And then, of course, you've got other goodies like you can resize things and whatnot. So let's go ahead and move away from the drums and let me show you on, a, on another source. Let's go ahead and move to a piano. All right, so I have here a piano. Let's go ahead and give this a listen. Let's bypass it using the plugins bypass and just hear this piano real quick. Beautiful, right? So we're going to go ahead. We're going to unbypass. I'm going to dial up the reverb time to something much, much longer. This could definitely use a long reverb. And let's use the universal learning first and go ahead, hit record. And let's just let it do its thing. So it's dialed in a reverb for us. Let's bring it out. Let's just bring away the dry for a second. So that's the reverb it came up with. Let's dial the dry back in. And let's try out the different areas here. So this is rich. Natural. Intimate. Artificial. So from here, let's go ahead and use a different learning algorithm. Let's go to keys and hit record and let it do its thing. Here's 
is rich, natural, intimate, and artificial. So I'm going to go for a mix between natural and rich. I'm going to dial the wet up to 100. And I'm going to open up the EQ and put in a peaking filter. Let's try a different color, perhaps. Let's try dampening it a bit. Let's go ahead and also bring the clarity up some. And let me show you here, I think this is a better demonstration of what clarity can do. Let's in fact bring this down a bit. We can adjust the cue. Yeah. So that is the smart reverb. A lot of power here. Very, very useful reverb. A lot of super creative potential to do things that reverbs just are not traditionally known to do. I am super excited about this unique take on reverbs I, I there's so many reverb plugins i'm just stoked to see one that's not like any other reverb i've seen if you have any questions about this let me know subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day